Hello friends, this video on chemical bonding part 27 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching the video, please make sure you have watched part 1 to part 26. Let's start with the molecular orbital theory. The last theory. The question is why do we need to study this theory? We already have so many theory. We have learned the Lewis theory. We have learned the Vesper theory. We have learned the valence board theory. Right? So many theories we have learned. Why do we need molecular orbital theory? See, if you see the oxygen, if you take this oxygen in the lab and experimentally you see oxygen is paramagnetic. This is a liquid oxygen and it get attracted towards magnet. So oxygen is paramagnetic. Experimentally, this is true. But with the existing model, we could not explain why it is paramagnetic. And also if you see H2 exists but He2 doesn't exist, we don't have answers for all these. We don't have answers for the chemical properties of the molecules. For these we need molecular orbital theory. So to answer this question, we will study molecular orbital theory. This theory was developed in 1932 and the features of this theory are, it says that electrons in the molecules are present in various molecular orbitals. See, the whole perspective is different in this case. The other theory is talks about atoms and the overlap. This theory says that if I have a molecule, I will view molecule as one piece. The way we have orbitals in atoms, we have orbitals in molecules. So in this case, the way molecular orbital theory works is, it consider molecule as one entity. right? And all the rules, most of the rules which we have for atoms, the similar kind of rules applies here for molecules. Please note. So instead of viewing molecules as two different atoms, it views molecules as molecules itself. And the molecules, see the way atoms has orbitals, right? Atom has orbitals and all these orbitals have different energy, right? And then we fill electrons in this uh, orbitals based on energy. Similarly, molecular orbital things uh, theory talks about a concept where it views molecules as molecules and then molecules will have orbitals and orbitals in this molecule as molecular orbitals will have different energies and when you fill electrons in these uh, uh, molecular orbitals, it will be based on the similar principle of Bow principles and those kind of things. Right? So, so the shift here is instead of uh, Considering molecules as two different atoms, it consider molecules as molecules. Right? So if you see, it says that the electrons in the molecules are present in various molecular orbitals. Because I'm talking about molecules as one entity and I have orbitals in the molecules that is called molecular orbitals and electrons are present in that. Right? So atomic orbitals of comparable energies and symmetry combine to form molecular orbitals. So how you get molecular orbitals? When atomic orbitals of comparable energies and symmetry, they combine to form molecular orbitals. So the way they have done here is, so this is my S orbital, S atomic orbital. These are my two S atomic orbitals. These are my atomic orbitals. It forms molecular orbital. So this is also my molecular. The one on the, okay, right here. So it's a molecular orbital. This is atomic. So in this case, if you see two s atomic orbitals combined to form molecular two molecular orbitals. Here also the law of conservation of orbital will true hold true. If two atomic orbitals are combining, it will form two molecular orbitals. One is bonding. This guy is bonding, and the other will be anti bonding. Right. Here also says <coughs> it is a Head on collision, head on, head on overlap, it is a sigma s orbital. Sigma s, this is a sigma s star actually, anti bonding orbital. Similarly, you have uh, uh, here also for p also, p also you have, you have head on uh, bonding, right? This is atomic orbital. It forms one bonding, 
एंड वन एंटी बॉन्डिंग ऑर्बिट एंटी बॉन्डिंग मॉलिकुलर ऑर्बिट करेक्ट सो इट इज सेइंग दैट एटॉमिक ऑर्बिट ऑफ कॉम्पेरेबल एनर्जी फॉर्म कंपेरेबल एनर्जी एंड सिमेट्रिक फॉर्म मॉलिकुलर ऑर्बिटल एंड देन वंस यू हैव मॉलिकुलर ऑर्बिटल यूज यू ट्राई टू फिल इलेक्ट्रॉन्स इन दैट मॉलिकुलर ऑर्बिटल्स एज इफ यू आर फिलिंग इलेक्ट्रॉन्स इन I'll explain those things. We will take two examples. Just understand that it talks about molecular orbitals. It it views the orbitals in the molecule as molecular orbital itself, right? And says that we have one bonding uh, molecular orbital and, and anti bonding. So bonding has higher energy. Anti bonding has lower energy. Sorry, bonding has lower energy, stable. Anti bonding has higher energy and is pretty unstable. And the if you see the distribution also. Uh, there is a nodal plane here actually this is node here where there is no electron this is also node there is no electrons here here also this node here so we'll explain this more when we uh, discuss this in detail also note that this atomic orbital is monocentric if you see this guys has one electrons but when you talk about molecular orbital it is polycentric in this case there are two electrons you see or two nucleus so in atomic orbitals they were one nucleus monocentric but if you see talk about this uh, atomic orbital uh, molecular orbital they have they are polycentric in this case two nucleus here also it is something on top of this so the nucleus is more if you see this case there are two atoms when they combine there can be ss overlap right so when there is ss overlap it will form Anti bonding and bonding s orbital. See, two atoms combine. That is a fact, experimental fact. Now, the structure, the behavior, all these things has to be explained. To explain this, there are so many theories. This is a different theory altogether. Don't get confused with the the last theory which we have learned, Bell's bond theory. This is a total different theory altogether, which talks about molecular orbital. And don't mix things because. there are different approaches to explain the natural phenomena of chemical bonding so this approach is totally different from the valence bond approach this approach says that there are two see atom looks like this that is pretty clear experimentally they have seen this now when atom combines so valence bond theory talks about orbital overlap but molecular orbital doesn't talk about all those things It says that s and s orbital atomic orbital will combine to form molecular orbital then you have p and p atomic orbital will combine to form molecular orbital similarly atomic orbital combine to form molecular orbital and auto atomic orbital is monocentric and molecular or orbital is polycentric correct so let's understand this molecular orbital theory in detail as i told the law of conservation of orbital is followed here also the number of molecular orbital form is equal to the number of combining atomic orbital for example if you see these are two atomic orbital right two atomic orbitals are combining so it gives one bonding molecular orbital and one anti bond anti-bonding molecular orbital correct so these are all atomic orbitals so two one s one s two atomic orbital combined and it gave two right it gave two actually you can think of this way actually or, 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 sorry this is plus this is minus and why it is like this because because these orbitals as we have learned are nothing but sorringer equation a wave form correct so we'll explain why it is in the next slide just understand that in this case the law of conservation of orbital is formed when two atomic orbital combine two molecular orbital are formed one is known as bonding the other is called anti bonding correct the bonding will have lower energy and they are stable the anti bonding will have higher energy so are unstable in case this case also if you see this is p orbital this is p orbital so this combines they form sigma p 
sigma p and sigma b star this is anti bonding molecular orbital and this is bonding molecular orbital here also you see p and p combined to form pi pi molecular orbital so this guy is my bonding molecular orbital and this is my anti bonding right and these guys have nodes here this is my nodes this is my nodal pair nodes where there is no electron here also this is a nodes actually now the question is why it forms bonding and anti bonding molecular orbital so why two so the answer is pretty simple see this this orbital is nothing but my a wave function right atomic orbital is nothing but my wave function so when i am saying my wave function one and i am saying wave function two i can either plus it or i can minus it because there is destructive and constructive constructive interference correct so one output will be you add these two wave function and the other will be you subtract this wave right so if they are this is my wave function if you subtract this you get anti bonding is subtraction when you add these you get bonding hope you understand this see atomic orbital is nothing but my wave function right so and these is this can be obtained by the solution from sorringer equation so it can either add or subtract so when you add the waves it becomes something like this when you uh, do a subtraction it becomes something like this here also if you see when you add these two when you add these two when you add these two actually it becomes something like this on addition on subtraction it will be something like this you just so subtract subtraction you flip this see for addition you just add it so this will become bigger it will become like this subtraction you flip this and then add so if you see it becomes something like this similarly here also for addition it will be something like this it will be added subtraction it will be something like this this dark and light color is just so that it got flipped for so subtracting this is plus this is minus subtracting you have to flip it and then add right so if you flip it and add it becomes something like this with the node here here also there is a node here also there is a node in case of anti bonding anti bonding has higher energy and they are unstable and these are bonding this is also bonding molecular orbital bonding mo and this is anti bonding m right correct so this is bonding and this is anti bonding this is how it looks like actually thank you visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos try free online tests get the best quality study materials study from the best tutors and mentors and much more thanks once again